We welcome you to Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message that will definitely bless your heart and soul. The church vision is impacting, transforming, and empowering people's lives for victorious living. Yes, this church is designed for you and mine, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message every Sunday morning. Yes, the church location is 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. The telephone number for prayer, information, or directions is 578-1450. Make sure you come out to this awesome church where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain of Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located again at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. Now get ready for a heavy word of God from Pastor Scotty Terrain. Get ready for the world. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. He'll open doors for you. He'll make ways for you. Uh, it said he'll make ways out of no ways. For you. See, I don't need you talking to your neighbor right now. You, we need to internalize some of this. He'll do this for you and you and for you and for you. He'll do it for all of us. He'll open the door. Because he addresses our needs. Yeah. Yes, sir. Something about uh, the darkness of night. Something about finding yourself in a dark place. Something about finding yourself in a dark situation. Uh, that's, why, that's why I believe 12 midnight is such a peculiar time. It's dark. But, 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 but you got to understand that you'll never see God so clearly and so brightly as you ever will when you're in a dark place. Because when he shows up, he brings illumination. He brings light. He brings opportunities because he will, make, he will open doors and make ways for all of us. Mm, didn't know it was that sermon today. He'll open doors for you. Yeah. So you really can't appreciate that unless you've tried to get somewhere and couldn't move because you had something blocking your way. Whether it was in your health, whether it was in your finances, whether it was in your family, and you couldn't reach that goal that you had in mind, and God showed up and with one word opened the door and allowed us to walk, walk through. But can I really tell the truth? There were some of us who didn't have enough sense to walk through, and he held the door well, until we walked through. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sister Marilyn, Sister Marilyn. Uh, let me get myself right here. Um, yeah, y'all read one through ten, right? Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's go to Mark, Mark 5. <laughs> I need the whole, I need thee every hour, I need thee, oh. Say, I come to to thee. Sing it. I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, oh, oh bless me now, my Savior. Hey, I come 
true to thee. Mark 5, 11. You've heard uh, 1 through 10. It was read in your hearing. We begin at verse 11 and says, Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country. They went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion. He was sitting and clothed and in his right mind. They were afraid. Those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him, him being Jesus, to depart from their region. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him, that he might go with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Mm -hmm. He departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled and all marveled. We want to talk from a thought subject today. Go home differently. Go home differently. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for this day, and we thank you for this opportunity. We ask now, God, that you would speak to your people through your word. Ask God that you would give me clarity of thought, clarity of speech that I could effectively share your gospel. Uh, God, we come to this sacred desk with no hidden agendas, but that you be glorified. For your word declares that if you be lifted up, that you will draw all men. So, Father, you have committed to do the drawing, so we commit to do the lifting, even in the preaching hour. More importantly, especially in the preaching hour, we lift you that men may see you and thereby be changed. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go home differently. We've had a challenging week as a church body. Uh, we have uh, suffered the loss of a very uh, integral person in our ministry. Um, we have uh, served her family. Uh, we have come together and celebrated her life through the wake and through the funeral, uh, and uh, although our hearts are heavy, uh, we are uh, pleased to know uh, that she is relieved of all pain uh, and that she has gone from labor to reward. And so I'm th I was thinking as we, we, we came together Friday night, one of the groups, one of the groups that shared, one of the groups that sang was the Thorpe family. And the Thor family not too long ago released a CD, and one of the songs on the CD, one of the songs that I really enjoy is, I'm going home another way. Mm -hmm. Not another way directionally, but I'm going home differently. I'm not going to be the same as I was when I came. When I, There's something that's going to transpire in this time that's going to help me be a little different than when I showed up on the scene. And that's the same way it happened for this brother that's in the text this morning. The same way uh, it happened, that's how it happened for this brother that, uh, that was living uh, amongst the tombs. Mm -hmm. We find in the text that uh, uh, the beloved disciples have set sail across the Sea of Galilee 
and uh, Jesus was aboard, and uh, Jesus is asleep. And they run into a storm, uh, and they're panicking. I could imagine the, the conversation Deacon Mark was, you go get him. No, I'm not going to go get him. You go get him. Oh, you won't you go get him. And they're in this storm, and they're battling because their faith is weakening because of what they are experiencing. But they understand Jesus is on board. Well, first question is, why was Jesus asleep? I believe he was asleep because he understood that storms are part of life. No need to lose sleep. No need to get worried. No need to uh, uh, pace the floor. They come and they go. Uh, so uh, they go to Jesus and uh, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to perish out here? We're about to die. We're in the middle of a storm. And Jesus gets up and he uh, begins to talk to the sea. He begins to talk to the wind and he says, peace. Be still. Mm -hmm. And they are so marveled because even the wind and the waves. Wait a minute. Y'all been with this man. Huh? Y'all been with this man. Y'all seen what he does. Y'all seen how he operates. Y'all seen how he has healed. And yet you are amazed when you see the wind and the waves obey. Sound a lot like us. Uh, we spend time with him and he blesses us and he uh, cares for us and he heals us and he keeps us. And yet sometimes he shows up and we still. That's right. Amen. 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 Not so much of how he does it, but the fact that he does it. See, we can't get caught up in the hows. Because the devil has a way of pulling you into the hows and you get there and you have no answers. And so then you become frustrated. And our faith begins to waver because we can't answer the question, how? But if you forget about how, because truth be told, it really doesn't matter how. I just know he will. If we stand on the fact that we know he will, we'll be reinforced. When we stand on the fact that we know he will, our faith will be strengthened. When we stand on the fact that we know he will, we'll be unshakable. I don't know how he's going to do it. Don't have the energy to try to figure it out. But I'm going to shout right now because I know he will. How do you know he will, preacher? Because when I look back over my life, I can't see a time when he didn't show up. I can't see a time when he didn't deliver me when I needed to be delivered. I can't see a time that he left me to my own devices. He always shows up. On time. Oh, boy. So he's spoken, and now there is a calm. They reach the shore, and they approach uh, this country called Gadara, where the Gadarenes live. And, 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 and first thing I need you to know is as they're coming out of this still time, Always beware when you have a still, peaceful time in your life. Uh, I, I, I'm not trying to scare you. I don't want to put you uh, on blast. But hear what I'm saying, y'all. When, when, when everything is running smooth, when money is right and children are acting right and your dog is barking and your cat is meowing, watch out. It's in the text. It's in the text because they're, they're at a time of peace. Everything is fine. And now they hit the shore, and now they got to deal with this brother that's living in the tombs. First point is the man who made his home in a cemetery. The cemetery was there by the sea uh, for a tranquil place of burial. But the demon-possessed man lives there. Uh, everything in the cemetery Nothing speaks to the future. It all speaks to the past. So you could say this brother was caught up in some stuff, caught up and could not move into his future because everything around him showed him the past. 
Uh, that's why you have to be careful who you hang out with, how, where you spend your time and where you invest yourself. Because if it's somebody that's trying to hold you to your past, they're contrary to what God is trying to do in your life. I understand we all got a past. We all got one. But God doesn't want you to stay there. He wants you to use your past as a springboard to your future. I'm trying not to pick up the handheld. I said I'm going to stand right here today. It's hard. His brother's in the tombs. Not only is he amongst the tombs, uh, but the text says he has an unclean spirit. So if he has an unclean spirit, then you can best believe he said some unclean words, had some unclean thoughts, and performed some unclean deeds. Unclean. Now, you can take it where you want to. Unclean. Okay? Uh, not only was he unclean, but get this, he was an outcast. Nobody wanted to deal with this brother. Now, nobody, nobody wanted him to say, nobody opened their home and said, come, stay with us. Nobody said, you can live over here. No, he was an outcast. Uh, but it was with good reason, I believe, because he was a violent brother. Uh, because the text says that he had often been bound in shackles and chains, but they couldn't hold him. So apparently somebody tried to help him with his problem, but they used the wrong method. They tried to bind him more. They tried. They put more restrictions on him. They gave him more rules that he needed to follow. Uh, and even with all of that, he continually broke out. Ever seen anybody? I'm not going to ask you if it was you. Ever seen anybody who just... Just couldn't get it together. The more, the more, the more they tried to press to get it together, it seemed the worse, the worse, the worse it got. They, they couldn't find any help. There was nobody. And when folk tried to help them, they turned on. Y'all seen them. Y'all know them. And they have been some of us. But I need you to understand that this brother was dealing with some real problems. See, you got to understand, you got to understand that, that the church, the church, I'm talking about the whole church, the universal church. Today, sometimes we slap spirituality over stuff that really is not that spiritual. That's right. That's right. There's some folk in here right now that are dealing with clinical depression. That's right. And somebody has told you, just pray about it. And you confused because you've been, I don't even, okay. You confused because you've been praying and you've been calling on the Lord. But every morning when you get up, you got this same depression hanging over, this same dark cloud hanging over, this same feeling following you. You get in the car, you go to the grocery store, you go to the ball game. Wherever you go, it's right there. And then you press your way maybe to Wednesday night or you come to Sunday, Sunday service Sunday morning and it lifts just for a minute. But by the time you get to the car at 1 o'clock, it's back. And they just keep telling you, pray about it. The truth of the matter is you may need some real help that prayer does not bring, y'all. We got folks sitting suffering because they don't understand and they're trying to do what we tell them to do. Uh, read your Bible and pray. And, and you need to read your Bible and you need, because don't go tell nobody the pastor rain said, you don't need to read your Bible or pray. No, you need to do both of those, but sometimes you need to go seek professional help. Amen. And can I help you? Ain't nothing wrong with getting help. Sometimes you just need to talk to somebody. Get this. It's in your insurance. You may as well use it. See, the person that you think has it all together, what you really don't understand is they go see a therapist twice a week. You just don't see it. Lord, help. Okay, I got it. Uh, yeah. Uh, this brother had some real problems, had some real problems, and they had tried to help him, but the methods they tried to use to help him put more restrictions on him, and this brother is fighting, trying to be free. He, don't, he doesn't know how he, what to do, how to do it, but he knows he can't stay in the shape that he's in. He's the man that lives in the cemetery. 
But the second point I need you to look at as the demons who made their home in the man. We see the first reaction to Jesus. Uh, he runs and he falls at his feet and worships him. Comes to, he comes to Jesus to be made clean, to be fixed. Uh, you got to understand. Think back. Think back before you got saved. Before you really got saved, before, you know, when you were just coming to church, uh, uh, you remember when, when, when you came in that day and the spirit of the Lord moved and you may have not known what was really going on, but you knew you had to have what was going on that day. When you came to the altar, it didn't matter who was with you. It didn't matter who was sitting in front of you. It didn't matter who was in the church. You knew that you needed help and your help was in the house that day. This man looks down. Text says, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him, cried out with a loud voice. What have I to do with you, Jesus? Son of the Most High, I implore you by God that you do not torment. Yeah, let, let me go back to that point. This brother is living in the cemetery, being tormented. Anybody ever been tormented? Don't raise your hand. Something you said, something that you did. Something that you thought, and after a while you knew it wasn't right. Yeah. And you, it, it, that thing, it, it made you toss and turn until you could lay eyes on that person Amen. and apologize. Amen. Torment, 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 torment. And he, he's there. He says, uh, don't come to, to torment me. The, the demons realize the Lord's power and authority over them. Okay. We have to begin to recognize the power and the authority that our God has over every problem that we have. Uh, we have to understand that it doesn't matter what the problem is, he has authority and power to address it. See, sometimes we want to give him X, Y, Z, but we don't want to give him A, B, C. No, if you give it all to him, he has the ability to fix it. Because what we have to do is stop talking to God about our problems and start talking to our problems about our God. I know what the report says. I know what the x-ray looks like. But I know God said that by the stripes of his son, I'm healed. So I'm going to rest in that and walk in that and talk to my x-ray. Yeah, yeah. So when I go talk to God, I'm thanking him for what he's already going to do. Because the, the, the word teaches us that he sent forth his word and it healed them. So if he sent forth his word uh, to heal them, his word was sent forth before you got sick. He didn't wait for you to get sick to send the word. The word was sent prior to. So when your body came under attack, when you reached the point that your healing was supposed to occur, your word met you there and you're healed. Mm. Power and authority. He has over every area of our lives. But the problem, the challenge gets to be, we want to keep certain areas for ourselves. Um, not that this happens at our house, just an example. But you know how companies come in? And we go through the living room, we shift in pillows and puffing up the couch and straightening up pictures and pushing everything out of sight. Because company's only going to go where? In the living room. There's some places if company could step around the corner. And that's how we do, that's how we do Jesus. We, we, we want to give him this space and we clean it and we, Sunday, Sunday morning, 1045, Lord, it's all yours. It's yours. We're going to block it off. But you mess around and tip back there about Monday, about 345. Because we don't give it all to him. We have to give it all to him. So he says to the man, come out of the man unclean spirit. But then he says, what's your name? And he answered him saying, uh, my name is Legion, for we are many. And also he begged him earnestly that he would not send him out 
of the country. Uh, demons are regional. So he's all, he understands he's under the authority uh, of Christ and whatever Christ says has to happen. So he, he's worried, the demons are worried that he's going to send them out of the country. Here's the thing, you have to understand that you can never really deal with an issue until you can name it. Okay, let me help you. Until you can put a name on it, till you can call it something, you can't address it. What is it that you're addressing? The alcoholic that doesn't admit to being an alcoholic will never get sober. The womanizer who doesn't admit to being a womanizer will never straighten his ways until he admits, until he puts a name. So whatever it is that you need God to fix, you got to put a name on it first. So he asked him, what's his name? And he says, Legion, for we are many. Now, now, now get this, get this. Uh, Legion in Christ's time consisted of uh, 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 approximately 6,000 soldiers plus 3,000 horsemen, approximately 6,000 foot soldiers plus 3,000 horsemen. That's approximately 9,000 people. Now, this is not to give you a literal number of 9,000, but it's to say this brother had a whole lot of stuff going on. This brother had a whole lot happening. Uh, so uh, you got to understand that it is important to name what's happening. In other words, in order to name it, you've got to look at it. You've got to address it. You've got to lock in on it. And sometimes in our lives, we keep dealing with the same little stuff because we won't stop, look at it, and name it. But the Bible teaches it's the small foxes that spoil divine uh, yeah so we have the man who made his home in the cemetery the demons who made their home in the man thirdly the people who didn't want Jesus to make his home with them isn't that strange uh, or yet is it not swine meant more to them than sanity Pigs meant more to them than this man's peace. Hogs meant more to them than this man's happiness or heaven. Bottom line, money meant more to them than the man. So now the, they have come, they've gone to the city and told everybody in the city, y'all need to come out here because he done messed us up. He, he, he called the demons out of legion, the dude that was staying out there. He called the, the, the demons out and he sent them into the swine and now the swine have gone into the sea and they're drowned and now... We got no, 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 no opportunity for financial gain. So now here the city folk come out to see what's happening. When they get out and they get an explanation and the Bible says, and they look and see that the dude that they knew lived in the tombs, the same brother that could not be bound or chained, the same brother that they could not help is now sitting at Jesus' feet clothed and in his right mind. Wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This, this can't be him. Y'all know every, every, every neighborhood has one of them. Uh, that when they get cleaned up, you look in it. Y'all know who, y'all know who I'm talking about. Matter of fact, I'm him for somebody. Somebody looking at me still scratching their head. I can't believe the Lord did that for him. Uh, uh, he's seated. He's clothed and in his right mind. Understand, seat, being seated was in a teachable position. See, if you really want to come out of some stuff, you're going to listen to somebody. You're going to allow somebody to pour into you. You're going to listen and operate in what it is they're telling you. Not only is he seated, but, but he's clothed. He was, before, he was running around naked, had no clothes on, ripping his clothes off, and he's in his right mind. Same brother that lived in the tombs. But here it is. This is my point. This is my main point, and I need y'all to get this. The man who went home a different way. So now the brother, uh, the people have come out, and they've raised so much sand. They said, Jesus, we need you to leave. We, uh, you can't stay here. We don't. Now get this. 
They knew this brother. They knew all he had gone through. They knew all he had dealt with. And they now see the miraculous hand of Jesus Christ. And they look at Jesus and say, we need you to leave. Wait a minute, don't be too hard on him. That's what we do, y'all. He shows up, he blesses us, he keeps us, he covers us, and then when we get ready to go do whatever it is we do, we want him to leave. We want to put him in Miles Chapel so he's here with me Sunday morning, but Lord, I, 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 I don't need you Saturday night. Okay, it is 2016. I, I don't need you Thursday night. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so they're pushing Jesus away. But how many of you know that, that Jesus is a gentleman? Uh, and so if you push him away, he leaves. He's not going to force himself upon you. And he's getting in the boat about to leave when the Gadarene runs to him. And he says, Lord, I want to go with you. I want you, 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 you changed my life. You, you, you healed me, man. I, I'm clothed. I can think right. Uh, people are looking at me different. I know I've been changed. I know the hand of God has touched me. I want to go with you, man. You, you did something in my life. You changed me. And now I'm no longer the same. I want to go with you. And Jesus looks at the man and says, no. What? I thought that was cruel. See, but Jesus has blessed this guy. He's changed his life and now he wants to go and he wants to follow him he wants to be a disciple of his and Jesus simply says no how many of you know that when Jesus says no there is a reason uh, we used to sing a song we used to sing a song in church uh, he won't never say no y'all remember that that ain't been my experience he said no on multiple occasions. But can I help you? I thank God now when I look back for the no. I thank God that he had foresight to tell me, you don't even know what you're dealing with. You don't know what you're asking for. So I'm going to have to tell you no. I got to say no to that. But when he tells you no, it's because he has something laid up. Oh, here we go again. We back in the layaway, y'all. He has something laid up for you that is more valuable than that thing that you have your eye on. When that joker walks out of your life that, that, that won't taste pies at a pie factory, uh, it's all right. He's got somebody that's going to love you like you need to be loved. No is a blessing. No will keep you out of some trouble. Huh? He says no. Uh, but what we have to understand is Jesus did not have a personal agenda. Uh, he didn't need a crowd of groupies with him. Uh, he didn't need uh, 15 armor bearers and security. He had a plan of ministry, and he understood that if the kingdom is going to be glorified, I don't need you with me. I need you to go home. Why I got to go home, Jesus? I'm glad you asked why you got to go home, because the folk in your home know you. They know what you used to do. They know how you used to act. They know what you used to say. And now that you've been changed, I need you to go home because there is no witness like that witness. When you show up and folk who know you from way back when look at you and say, my God, it had to be the hand of God to change your life because I remember when. And now I look at folk and say, yeah, I remember when too. But the Lord has flipped the script. And if you stick around me long enough, he'll do the same for you. And so after being upset with God, after not understanding what God was doing, the light bulb came on. It's time for all of us to go home a little differently. We can't go home the same way we came because people know how you were when you left home. But when you show up back at home and now you're clothed in your right mind, you're teachable, you're loving people, you're giving to people, then they look at you and know the power of a living God. It's time to go home differently. We go through too much to come in here on Sunday morning 
to go home the same way. Yeah. Uh-huh. Amen, amen. We up washing. Mm. We up fixing. We up patting. We up putting on and strapping down and tightening up. Go through all that to come up in here. Look halfway cute. Won't move, won't give God a praise. And go up out of here and got to face the same demons we left. I ain't got that kind of strength. I need to come up in here. I I don't come up here because I ain't got nothing else to do. I got a need to be here. I need to have an experience with him, not only on Sunday, but I need him to meet me Monday through Sunday. I need him to show his hand in my life that when I go back home, folk can look and see he's made the difference. I didn't do it. I couldn't fix myself. I couldn't change myself, and you can't either. But when you yield your life to God, he has a way of using you, using you to be a blessing to the folk that tried to throw you away. Yeah. Mm. Uh. This brother living, living in the tombs, demons living in him, living amongst crazy folk. Now, you know, that ought to give you some indication of how far out there this brother was. Because the folk in the city saw the miracle and still wanted Jesus to leave. But this brother was ostracized from that group. But be careful who you push out there. Be careful who you throw away. Be careful who you count for dead because that will be the same joker. The same brother, the same sister that God will pick up and and restore. And you know what God will do? He'll bring them right by your spot in your time of need. And they'll look at you and know you did them wrong. They'll look at you and know you talked about them. They'll look at you and know you cussed them out. They'll look at you and said that they, they'll know that you said they would never amount to anything. And God will put it in their heart to bless you. And they'll bless you anyway. Yes, And the truth of the matter is, you want to feel small? Let the Lord use somebody that you've thrown away to bless your life, and you'll be feeling about this big. Okay, I'll talk about me. I ain't going to talk about y'all. Uh-huh. Let's go home differently. Declare as the Thorpe family declares, I'm going home another way you ain't got to go home perfect just don't go home like you came oh god the kingdom promotion is not predicated upon perfection it's progress it's progress So sometimes you need to shout. No, ain't no sometimes. You always need to shout when today is better than it was yesterday. Whatever it is. Y'all know I use the analogy uh, in one sermon. uh, Last month I may have punched you in your face, and this month I may have just balled my fist up and walked off. That's progress. Okay, I'm going to mess up somebody's theology right through here. Uh huh. Last month you may have drunk, drunk a fifth of Patron, but this month you just took a shot. That's progress. I'm going to let that soak in. Listen, listen. Because we get real religious. We pull out the rule book of do's and don'ts. The thing that sends you to hell is not accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. That's what sends you to hell. Amen. Amen. Now, the truth of the matter is, if you give your life to Christ and you're dedicated, you want to walk as Christ has called you to walk. So there's some things that you won't do or you, tr- you begin to walk away from. But that's a process. So, uh, again, if today is better than yesterday, you got reason to give him praise. Yeah. It's one of the challenges we have in the church about getting folk in the church because we, they come to the altar and we whoop out this list of do's and don'ts. 
if we will give them the word and love them where they are, they'll go home, but they won't go home like they came. And it may take three, four, five, 12 months, but sooner or later, dresses will come down, pants come up, conversation begins to change, but we, the body of Christ, have to be willing to invest love and time into folk. There, there is no, there is no, 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 no potion for instant Christian. Amen. Amen. It's a process. So while you might not go home perfect, just go home differently. And sometimes, sometimes differently doesn't show up in your actions initially. It has to first show up in your mind. You first have to consider it. And then when you grab it, then you take it to your heart. And once it's taken into your heart, then it shows up in your actions. That's why I ain't in the gym right now. Because it's still in my mind. I'm, I'm just laying it out. I'm helping you understand what I'm saying. I'm, I know I need. I know I need to be in the gym. I know I need to be on the treadmill. I know I need to be pumping some iron. I, I, yeah, you know. I know. But until I embrace it in my heart, and let me help you. It don't even matter if I go get a membership. That's why I hadn't even gone to pay for the membership because where I am right now, I'm paying for somebody else to use the machine. But when it hits me. Y'all won't see the change immediately. <laughs> oh, yeah, pass it, pass it back in. Hey, pass it back. But after about a couple of months, you, Pastor, look like your robe getting a little big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been hanging out with Drew. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's a process. Just go home differently. Grasp the thought. Let's rest on our feet. Grasp the thought that he will answer your prayer. He will show up on your behalf. He will take care of you. So you don't have to be moved by your situation. You don't have to be moved by the circumstances. But you can know that he's going to show up. And if I know I got help on the way, I can fight a little longer. Got a little more strength. I know I don't have to roll over. I don't have to run. If I can maintain till reinforcements get there, Uh I'll be in good shape. So today if you're here and you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we offer Christ to you. He has the ability to speak one word and your entire life will change. So you don't have to wait till you get it all together, till you get it all right to come. But what I can promise you is if you'll come, he'll address every problem that you have. They don't just mysteriously go away. As a matter of fact, some of us can testify, we really didn't know all the problems we had until we got saved. Because we didn't pay attention. We were in the mind somewhere else. But he has the ability to address everyone. So we open the altar for you if you're here and you. Chapel Baptist Church, located at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message that will definitely bless your heart and soul. The church vision is impacting, transforming, and empowering people's lives for victorious living. 
Yes, this church designed for you in mind. Well, the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message every Sunday morning. Yes, the church location is 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. The telephone number for prayer, information, or directions is 578-1450. Make sure you come out to this awesome church where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain of Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located again at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. Now, thank you so much for watching, and may God continue to richly bless you.